and welcome to Dead Synchronicity. Tomorrow comes today. Hope you're all doing well. This is Ashram in Gaming. We're going to start this game. Never played it before, but we'll see what it's all about. Let's just hope he wakes up one of these days. Come on, my friend. Hang on. Don't give up. Wake up, Michael. Come on. You have to wake up. Um, <clears throat> we've got three choices. Who are you? Who's there? Where are you? Where are you hiding? What's happening? What is this place? Please tell me. Okay, I'm going to go with... Where are you? Where are you hiding? Where are you? Where are you hiding? Please, Michael, wake up. Wake up. The silence. This darkness. Where am I? Damn it. I can't. I can't remember. Uh, what's happening? What is this place? Please tell me. What's happening? What is this place? Please tell me. Michael, please wake up. You have to wake up. Michael? Is that my name? Please tell me where I am. I. I can't remember anything. Who are you? Who's there? Wake up, Michael. Please wake up. Wake up now. Don't go! Uh, please! Uh, come back! Come back! This silence. This darkness. This emptiness. Okay, I get to. What's that? Can't click on that. Oh, what's that? Oil lamp. Camp full of rats. Good morning. I hope you're feeling better. Uh, but. Now don't be alarmed. I'm glad you feel strong enough to get out of bed. That's wonderful news. I must say, you're looking much better. Considering what you've been through, of course. Who are you? Ah, yes, of course. Forgive my manners. You've been with us uh, for so long that I forgot that you don't know who we are. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Rod Atkinson. I'm... well, I was. I was the director of the Municipal Property Registry before... well, you know... before the world collapsed on us. Ah. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Atkinson. Um, can you tell me what I'm doing here? Can you tell me what I'm doing here? Yes, of course. I think we owe you an explanation. A few days after the great wave, we found you lying in a ditch near the airport. You were badly injured and unconscious. We couldn't just leave you there. Someone had already stolen your luggage and identification. It was awful. So we decided to take care of you ourselves, and brought you here. You've been with us ever since. By the way, I should tell you that when we found you, your clothes were ripped to shreds. So we threw them away. The clothes you're wearing now are mine. You'll find more things in that wardrobe. If you need anything, just help yourself. Thank you, Mr. Atkinson. But... Uh... 
Uh, we'll go with this one first. There's three different choices, but we'll go with the third choice. From what you've told me, I see that you've saved my life. I'm very grateful, Mr. Atkinson. No, please. You don't have to thank us. We just did what we had to. It's our moral obligation to uphold the ethical principles of civilization in this new world. But call me Rod, please. And, well, we also did it for Colin, you see. What kind of future does he face if we accept that it's every man for himself, that no one cares about anyone else? It's a terrifying prospect, don't you think? We're just doing whatever we can to avoid that future, that's all. Colin? Yes, Colin is our only child. Our one ray of hope since the catastrophe. I'm going to confess something to you. Colin is the only reason my wife and I still struggle to keep going in this new world. We would have given up a long time ago if it weren't for him. Of course, I understand. So that was your wife's voice that woke me up a few minutes ago, right? My wife? No, that's impossible. My wife has been with me in the other room the whole time. We haven't come out of there for hours. But I'm glad you're feeling better and are fully conscious now. I guess we could say you've been reborn. And although the circumstances aren't the best, simply being alive nowadays is practically a luxury. So, welcome to our home. Um, we'll go with the second one because I already want to know what this great wave is. At least we might be able to get a bit of an explanation for it. The great wave? What are you talking about? Well, what would I be talking about? That damned, excuse my language, explosion that brought ruin to all of us. The origin of this filthy new world that now seems to be our permanent reality. You look a little confused, if you don't mind my saying so. Do you really not know what I'm talking about? I, I don't know. I'm afraid not. Let me ask you. You said, with us. Who else lives here? Ah, yes, of course. I still haven't properly introduced my family to you. Now is a bad time, but I promise to make proper introductions later. My wife and I sleep in the other room, and, well, little Colin sleeps with us. Where am I? What is this place? You are in what I venture to call our home, our humble, hopefully temporary home. This is one of the many trailers that make up the refugee camp. And believe me, we can consider ourselves lucky to live between these four walls. Most of the inhabitants of this hellhole, excuse my crude language, have nothing more than plastic tarps and cardboard for shelter. Wait a second. Did you say refugee camp? Yes, of course. The facility for temporary accommodation of disaster victims is what they called it. You know, after the army declared martial law following the catastrophe. But do you really not remember? Do you really not remember anything about all this? I feel a little weak and dizzy, Mr. Atkinson. Excuse me, I'm afraid I can't. I can't remember a thing. Hmm, I see. There have been many cases like yours in the camp. Try to rest and not to get too agitated. Well, there's one thing I can tell you. You can consider yourself fortunate. There's nothing nice to remember about recent times, believe me. Uh, mm, mm. Rod! Rod! Please excuse me, but I have to leave you now. No, wait, please. What's happening? Uh, don't go yet. I'm sorry, I understand that you have a lot of questions to ask me, but now isn't the time. Believe me, I promise to answer each and every one of your questions in peace and quiet later. Sorry, but I have to go. Uh, uh, Rod, please, quickly! Okay, all right. Now that you're feeling better, you can go out and take a walk around the camp. But please, be very careful out there. The world you knew before is gone. Heed my warning, don't touch anything. Don't talk to anyone, and don't get mixed up in anything. At least until someone explains to you how things work in this new world the Great Wave left us. Everything has changed so much out there. All right. Thanks for the advice. Ah, one more thing before I go. You've been with us for quite a while now, and we don't even know what to call you. What is your name? My name? Michael. My name is Michael. 
Very pleased to meet you, Michael. We'll talk again later, I promise. Michael. That's what that disembodied voice called me. That must be my name. Wake up, Michael. That's all she said. Leaving me in this immense void where I can't remember anything. Great wave? New world? Refugee camp? But what the devil could have happened out there? I think it might be a good idea to go out there and take a look. Okay, so... Let's... Do they speak Rinpocheet? Well, look at that. When I pulled back the sheet, part of it got torn on the spring sticking out of the bed frame. I hope Rod doesn't notice. The bed frame under the mattress is so battered that one of the springs is turned into a very sharp protruding object. A depressing sight. A damp mattress and a bed frame and dirty rumpled sheets. This is the bed where I've been convalescing all this time. With the glass in the door broken and that thick coating of grease lining it, I doubt anything's been baked in this oven for a long time. With the glass in the door broken, I doubt any... A pile of frying pans, plates, and dirty silverware waiting to be washed. Ugh. This place smells like a cheap, greasy spoon. So square is to interact with objects. X is to go by them. I'm not going to go and turn it off. Uh, let's go over by the wardrobe and then we'll interact with it. Impossible. It's locked. I'm afraid my host forgot to unlock it before he left. Oh, so he said 12 past ourselves and then he's left. That's very nice of him. Good God. What the hell happened here? Rod was right. I don't know what hit this place. But wherever it was, it struck it to its very foundations. Without any mercy whatsoever. What's happening now? You better hide, dude. Don't you know that it's dangerous to show your face when the cleanup brigades come into the camp? You're new here, aren't you? Yeah, you could put it that way. Well, welcome to your new home. I'm Hank, but everyone calls me the Hunter. I'm... Michael. But what's going on up there? Nothing, Mike, just routine. The cleanup brigades are taking away a sick person, a dissolved. You know how it is, just doing their job. Ironically, that house belongs to one of the camp moles. Those traitorous scumbags. Brigades, dissolved, moles... I don't... I don't know what you're talking about. I can't remember anything. Oh, I see, you're a blankhead. Well, you better get up to speed real quick if you want to survive here, Mike. Find me if you need help, dude. I can get you whatever you need. Doesn't matter where it is, how fast it runs, or where it tries to hide. That's why they call me the Hunter. All right. I'll remember that. Come back here! Don't take her away! Don't you know who I am? Come back here! They shot that poor man in cold blood. But... Why did they do that? Hey, uh, Hank? I'm afraid he's gone. This tangle of metal was a driver's door once upon a time. Time has left these hinges bent and rusted. There's no way I'm going to be able to break open this door with my bare hands. It's the lot outside Rod's trailer. The ground is covered with trash, scrap metal, and broken glass. Something tells me it might not be a good idea to walk around here barefoot. But what's happening? What is this? What the hell's going on here? Good God. I think I'm starting to lose my mind. How much that? Ron seems upset and worried. What's going on in there? 
from here, it looks like one of those metal boxes for Danish butter cookies. And judging from how worn it looks, I'd say that it's been reused over and over again. That's Rod's wife. I heard her calling him from the other side of that door that just closed behind him. She looks worn out with those dark circles under her eyes. She looks like she hasn't slept in days. That must be little Colin, Rod's son. He looks unwell. Was that him I heard moaning in pain inside the trailer? Hmm. It's hard to see clearly through all the grime on this glass. On the other side is the room where Rod and his family have locked themselves away. Hmm. On the other side... Okay. I like how you can interact with things on this. It's quite good actually already. Very interesting to see how it ended up like this. Hey you! Don't even think of putting your paws on that shopping cart! Stay away from my stuff or I swear I'll rip your guts out with my bare hands! Okay, okay, calm down. I won't touch anything. Grumpy old bugger. Ouch! Damn it! I managed to rip open the sole of my foot in a rusty nail. Hey, it's not a good idea to walk around barefoot in this enormous trash heap. You won't get very far without shoes. Yeah, thanks for the tip. The tip is yours to keep. But if you come near my things, you're a dead man. Understood? Wait, I recognize you. Aren't you the guy Rod's been taking care of in his trailer all this time? Yes, I am. Do you know Rod? Of course I do! Everyone in the camp knows Rod! You owe him your life! Don't doubt that for a second! Nowadays, no one in his right mind would do what he did for you! For a total stranger! Yes, I'm very grateful to him. But tell me, can I ask you a few questions? Okay, we've got four choices this time. Um, obviously we're not going to do the fourth one yet. Um... We'll do the first one. I've been hearing about an enormous explosion. The Great Wave. What on earth are they talking about? What? What kind of question is that? Where have you been all this time? Sleeping in a cave? Well, you could say that. The Great Wave is the reason we're confined here like animals. The entire world went to hell in a handcart that day. And we went with it. Um... Yeah, we'll that one. I've been able to see that with my own eyes. Can you tell me anything else? Okay, I'll tell you what I know. The great wave hit us one Friday afternoon right out of the blue. I remember it perfectly because I'd just come out of an important meeting at that precise moment. I'd made a lot of money from a very fat contract. Yes, sir, Bob. Very, very fat. <sighs> First, we felt the ground quaking, as if a volcano was about to erupt right under our feet. I had to get out of my car and run. Then came the explosions. Glass broke. Buildings toppled. And then for weeks, the stench of corpses rotting in the streets. In just a few hours, <laughs> that damn great wave set us all with our businesses, our money, and our convertibles Straight back to the Dark Ages. The Dark Ages? Of course! Are you surprised? In a matter of minutes, we were left with no electricity, no water, no communications. And after the initial chaos, the dissolved started to show up. And that horrible gash opened up in the sky. That stupid breach up there that no one in this hellhole has bothered to explain to us. <sighs> the fact is that the remains of the old system only held up for a few weeks. And through the cracks, what you see around you started seeping in. The new world, right? 
Yes, indeed. You catch on fast. The new world was here to stay. Welcome to the future, son. Not exactly the way you pictured it, huh? Um, change the subject or confine. You know what we do that. Confined? Do you mean we can't leave the refugee camp? Refugee camp? <laughs> I've always found that term amusing. It seems like things on the other side of the fence work a little better. But here, look around you. Does this look like a refugee camp? It's an army detention camp. <coughs> and you're a prisoner. Once you come in here, you lose everything. Even your name. To them, you're nothing more than a rat. Just another camp rat. You'd never be able to get through the gate. Especially if you don't know anyone. Or don't have any contacts on the outside. Doesn't matter who you might have been before the old world collapsed. Believe me, I speak from experience. If you're just a camp rat, I'm afraid the only way out of here is feet first. I don't know if you get my meaning. Of course I do. Thanks for your encouraging words. You can keep the words, but come near my things and you're a dead man. Uh, this shooting, could you explain to me what happened? This shooting? Could you explain to me what just happened here? Explain what, exactly? That show the cleanup brigades put on? Someone got too chatty and ratted out a sick person, that's all. There's usually a pact of silence in the camp. No one likes to see one of their own in those ambulances. But in this case, the dissolved was a relative of one of the camp moles. Ironic, isn't it? But they shot a man. Yes, so they did. So what? <sighs> the price of human life has gotten a lot cheaper lately. That needn't surprise anyone these days. Did you say dissolved? Of course, the dissolved. But what the hell's wrong with you? Those people are a real plague. They're sick. And, so they say, highly contagious. Let me give you a piece of advice about them. If you see one, run the other way like he was the devil himself. Even if they don't give you that <coughs> deadly disease or drive you crazy with their trances, the cleanup brigades will kill you for hiding one. You saw it with your own eyes. They don't even respect their own camp moles. A camp mole? What is that exactly? A spy. A stool pigeon. It's in the army's interest to control the camp from inside. And so they pay some of the inhabitants to feed them information about what happens on this side of the fence. Who comes in? Who goes out? Who causes trouble? And, of course, who gets sick? They're scumbags, but very well-paid scumbags. And they have certain privileges that no one else in here has. Never trust a mole. They'll do anything to hang on to the favors the army gives them in this hellhole. Okay. I'll take your advice. You're welcome. But stay away from the shopping cart or I'll rip your guts out. Got it? Tell me about Rod Atkinson. Well, I don't know him very well, but they say he's decent enough. Too decent for the times we're living in. <laughs> Did you know that before coming here, he was someone important? I think he worked for the government, and he still has some good contacts on the outside. But they're not good enough to get that stupid do-gooder and his family out of here. Stupid do-gooder? Well, you know how it is. Rod is one of those good Samaritans who think they can save the world. He has helped a lot of people in the camp. But I think he's going to run into problems. I reckon that he's too weak for these times. I don't know how long he'll be able to survive. You said he had a son. A pretty good reason to hang on, don't you think? Ah, uh, yes, Colin. I haven't seen that kid running around here for some time. You know if he's all right? I don't know. I still haven't seen him. His father told me about him. Well, I'm glad he's not anywhere near me. <laughs> 
That brat doesn't have anything better to do than to try to snoop in my shopping cart. Well, I'll be going on my way. Good luck to you, pal. Just be sure to stay away from my things. Well, he was a friendly fellow, wasn't he? No. With my foot in this condition, I wouldn't get very far. I think it would be better to go back inside the trailer and try to take care of this wound. It doesn't look too good. Okay, so we've injured ourselves. The enormous ourselves. trailer that serves as a home for Rod and his family. I find it hard to imagine this heavy old monstrosity ever traveled on the highway. Yeah, we've injured ourselves already. We've only just stepped out into this new world. Um, can we go knock on the door and tell him? No. It's no use. It won't open. I heard Rod bolt it from inside. The mattress still shows the imprint of my body. I must have been lying on it much longer than I thought. Okay, have we got anything in here? Nothing in the suitcase. Um, pot lid. Hmm. There's a very worn old notebook hidden under the lid. The cover is practically falling off the spiral binding. It looks like someone stashed it here some time ago, and then forgot about it. Notebook. It's an old accounting ledger that still has a few blank pages left in it. From what's written in here, it looks like someone was using it as a diary, before ripping out almost all its pages and leaving it inside the oven in the trailer. A pile of front. Uh. This oven is empty, dirty, and abandoned. There's nothing left in there that could interest me. I'm not going to snuff out this oil lamp. This place looks sinister enough with light. No, I'm just trying to think if you could wrap that. There's no, you can't interrupt with that. It's locked. Impossible. It's locked. I'm afraid my. Um. This spring sticking out of the bed. What was that? It's an unframed snapshot, stuck directly on the wall of the room. Two adults and a child smiling at the camera in what looks like an enormous yard. One of them is Rod, my host. Hmm. Maybe. Let's see if I can go and trade that man. Maybe I can give him some it. I doubt he needs this notebook. He's already got a shopping cart overflowing with junk. How about the pot, maybe once that. I'd better hold on to it. I don't think anyone else would be interested in this old dented piece of metal. A bunch of shacks, trying valiantly to stay standing in a sea of mud and trash. I can't imagine how it must be to live in one of them. Nothing but leaky... Good God. I don't think there's anything else we can interrupt with, is there? Just vacant lot, Rod's trailer. We can't go anywhere because it won't let us. We're going to have to go back inside here and figure out a way to sort this. Is there a way up here? Can't interact with anything else in here. Dirty dishes. The door's locked. A depressing sight. A damp mattress. This is the bed where I... I said his foot first, but it's not actually. This oven is. There's nothing with the glass. I doubt. 
No. Come over here. I can't interact with his foot, even though he says it's his foot that's hurting. Dirty dishes. Can't interact with anything here. Hmm. Close door. Can't. I could go outside, but it's not really anything we can interact with. Unmade bed. The oil lamp is the only source of light in this part of the trailer. Better not fool with it. I might end up in complete darkness. Hmm. Hmm. If I want to open up the closet, this isn't the way. I don't see anything here that could be covered. Use this here? How? Oh, you tell me, mate. No idea. Hmm. Okay. Oh, I don't know. You know what? Let's try again out there. I want to interact. You want to interact with that lamp? Maybe I can interact with the fire. Let's try it. I don't think I'd get. No, no, no. Fire. I'm not going to do it. Too many things around me have already gone up in smoke. The entire world has been reduced to ashes. Someone improvised a bonfire inside that drum. Although the smoke starts to irritate the lungs pretty quickly, it seems like the only heating system the camp inhabitants have. Okay. Not that. How about that? I'm afraid there's already way too much trash in. Not a shopping cart, the burning drum. Try that. Let's see. I could swear that the lid is just the right size for this drum. Perfect. Damn it! What's going on? <laughs> this damn shithole is going to be the end of us. <laughs> I have to do this quickly before this man stops coughing. Well, let's this see what we have here. Shithole is going to be the death Ugh. Of I don't see anything but rotten food, tattered clothes, and trash. <laughs> Wait a minute. It seems like there's also a small billfold with a bunch of credit cards. A person can't even what the hell is this guy this doing with so much plastic anymore. money? Someone improvised a bonfire inside that drum. Now that I've covered the top, the smoke coming out of the bullet hole on the side is concentrated, making it act like a chimney. Thank you. And we can use that, I think. <laughs> Poor bloke, I'm suffocating him. Yeah. That is very useful. Let's see useful. if I can do this. That is very useful. Good. Oh, what's in here? The mechanism gave way in the first try, but the car is trashed. For my sake, I hope that guy outside never finds out about this. Here we go. A pillowcase. Oh. That idea, what's that? Bottle of whiskey, oh, okay. Um. I'm not going to waste shoes. the whiskey on that. That would only make a puddle in the closet. And those shoes wouldn't be much cleaner than they are now. Hmm. Not just yet. I'm grateful to Rod for his hospitality. But these old shoes don't look very clean. It won't take more than a few hours for the wound on my foot to turn really ugly. And the last thing I need now is a serious infection. Okay. Come over here. Um. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's see how well this protruding bed spring can cut. Okay, we got that. What do we do this then? To be frank, it doesn't seem like a very good idea to be spilling liquor around here. Okay. Can't interact with it himself. Okay. Can I interact it with that? I ah, use a little of what's in the bottle to soak the bandages. 
Okay. Okay, now. Look over there. Get back to the shoes. No, no, don't shut the... Don't shut the door. Open it. Silly man. Here goes. Okay. I'll use the bandages on my foot. I hope the alcohol is enough to keep it from getting infected. Okay, that's all it. Let's pray this improvised remedy doesn't lead to a delightful case of gangrene. What bastard put a lid on the drum? You tried to suffocate me, you bunch of assholes! I think that guy out there just discovered the reason for a sudden coughing fit. Some coward in this shithole wanted to suffocate me! Me! Who was it? Who was it? Come back here so I can give you back your lid, you son of a bitch! Oh dear. Did you hear that noise, Rod? What's going on out there? I don't know. I'll go have a look. I think it's that poor drunk who's always hanging around the trailer. He's kicking up a fuss again. It's a good thing poor Colin can't hear his insults. Don't ever say anything like that again, Rod. I'm sorry, honey. I wasn't thinking. Can we go talk to them? What are you doing here? Get out of here! You've no business being in this room! Rod, I I'm sorry. I... Oh dear. But, what's going on? Get out of here, Michael! You didn't see anything, understood? Out! Out! Oh, okay. Oopsie-daisy. Excuse my outburst, Michael. I shouldn't... I shouldn't have behaved that way. It's not like me. But this new world brings out the worst in all of us. It's just that I can't stand to see Colin suffer this way. So for your own good, please, stay away from this room. Away? Why? It's no use trying to hide it. You're bound to find out sooner or later. Colin is very sick, and the authorities claim his illness is highly contagious. Highly contagious? Is he one of the dissolved? Michael, I won't let anyone use that word in my house! Yes, Colin caught that damn disease. Um, we'll give it a second, How did Colin get infected? We don't know. No one knows how the disease is spread. The only thing we know is that the disease appeared after the catastrophe and that it's spreading like wildfire. So the Great Wave brought the dissolved with it? Yes, but don't use that word again. Not in this house, anyway. It's so cruel and disrespectful. In effect, that's the only thing we know for sure about all this insanity. The Great Wave took everything from us and left us with this epidemic. And what exactly does the disease consist of? I don't know, Michael. No one really does. The only news is what the army brings us. They say the disease is highly contagious, and it's our duty to turn over all victims to the cleanup brigades. But no one has ever come back after being carried off in one of those ambulances. No one. So we can't let them take Colin, do you understand? Yes, of course I understand. They say that all the victims are condemned, that there's no salvation for anyone, that at the end of their suffering, and their trances lie certain death. I think that even the army is afraid of the victims. Really strange things happen around them, Michael. Things you wouldn't believe. What things happen around people infected with the disease? Strange things with no possible explanation. In their trances, they... they go places, Michael. They bring back information. They know things. They talk to people who are no longer with us. And we've been living like this for weeks. The things that are happening around Colin are getting more and more confusing and hard to bear. Talking to the dead? Jesus. This man's nerves are shot from the exhaustion and stress. What's happening to Colin is terrible. If only there was something I could do. Well, Michael, you can help us. I'm convinced that our finding you was no coincidence. You've got to help us. 
Okay. We'll give that one. You said yourself that all the victims are condemned. What can I do? No, all is not lost. In the camp, there are rumors of a cure. It seems that in the city, on the other side of the fence, the victims have access to a drug. But we can't get it here. And my contacts out there, well, let's just say they can't do anything to help. Uh, so there's a yeah. drug that can cure them? Yes, but they say that producing it takes a long time and is very expensive. And so it's reserved for city dwellers who can afford to pay for it. Get us that drug, Michael. I beg of you, please. Colin's time is running out. Getting involved looks dangerous. I saw that shooting out there. There's also the possibility of infection. Infection? Are you afraid for your life, Michael? Without our help, you'd be dead right now. Dead. Don't forget that. What's more, I could help you in return. I could help you get back what you lost, don't you see? Give me back what I lost? But you hardly know me, Rod. I know the essential part, Michael. I know that you're a blankhead. Blankhead? What the devil does that mean? A blankhead is a person with no memories, who can't remember anything. It seems that the Great Wave had an enormous neurological impact on certain people, Michael. You're not the only one, or even the worst case. There are people who even forgot how to talk and how to walk after the explosion. Some ended up dying of starvation. They forgot what food looked like, how to chew it, even that eating was a necessity. You can consider yourself lucky. You still remember how to keep yourself alive. And that's the important thing. The natural recovery process is slow. It can take months, if at all. Listen to me, Michael. A man without memories is just a shadow. Or even worse, he's nobody. I still have some contacts out there. I was an important man in the municipal government. I could trace your name, your data in public records, your fingerprints. I could restore your whole life in the blink of an eye. But please, help us. I'm grateful for your help, Rod. And for everything you people have done for me. But... Listen to me, Michael. We know that it's possible that our son is condemned to die. In fact, my wife and I have everything prepared for when he leaves us. Our child is the only thing that keeps us holding on in the new world. Nothing would have any meaning for us without him. So if there is even the slightest chance of saving him, we are prepared to do whatever it takes. Please, Michael, help us. Uh, mm. For God's sake, listen to him. He's just a child. Rod, come in here, quickly! Bring us that cure, and we'll help you get your life back. Colin is our only hope in this new world. Help us save our future, and I'll give you back your past. I promise you. Goodbye, Michael. No, Rod, wait. Bring a drug? Is he out of his mind? That man wants me to put his son's life in my hands? I can barely remember who I am. And I probably wouldn't last more than a few hours out there. But Rod was right. A man without a past is nothing more than a shadow. He offered to help me get my life back, my memories. So if I want answers, I have only one possible course of action, to get that drug. Today's more than a couple of the